Hey everybody, today I'm in Houston, Texas with Vinicius Draculino Magalhães. I think I screwed that Very up. Very good, oh, you did great. You did awesome. awesome. Better than everybody else. <laughs> uh, Draculino, as he's known, has been in the jiu-jitsu scene for a long time and is... And why don't you, why don't you tell us when you started training jiu-jitsu and what your very first day in class was like? Man, it was great. Long time ago, as I can tell you, <laughs> like back in like 84, I think. Yeah, 84, I was 13, 84. Uh, I used to do judo before, but actually that's funny because I got hooked to jiu-jitsu, not because of judo, but because of surfing. Because I used to surf on a spot in Rio called Cabra Mar that uh, a lot of people were surfing there, and including the Gracie family. And I was really close neighbors from Half Gracie, Hanzo, High and Gracie, and, you know, the family. And I got to know them through surfing. We got to hang out together. It was like a big crew. They used to hang out there in Cabra Mar. And uh, I actually began to see the effective, effectiveness of jiu-jitsu in some beach fights, actually. <laughs> but it's very common in surf culture that you know, if you get in somebody's wave in front of somebody's somebody else's wave, people get mad. And if you surf in a spot every day, and people, you know, like a person who's not a local, come by and try to act, kind of like in a in a bad way, you know, there's fights too. So the surf culture is really interesting. You know, it's very connected to jujitsu. And then I saw a bunch of times these fights going on. So just like the fights that you see in the old, old, old Gracie in action. VHS tape. Yes, sir. That's exactly what you saw there. Kind of the same thing, you know, same vibe. And then I was seeing like the guys, you know, like really smaller than the other guys and doing really good, you know, doing really, really, really good and pretty much like uh, dominating people, doesn't matter the size or their toughness or anything. So I was really impressed by that. I said, like, you know what, man, I'm going to try that out. And I begin to train, you know, to get my first notions with a guy that, you know, a surfer too, he used to surf there, really good friends of the Gracie family of ours. His name is uh, Tochela Jordan Pitoko. He's a very nice guy. He begin to get my first notions of Jiu-Jitsu. And then I went to begin to get more serious and passionate about it. I went to the Gracie, uh, to the Gracie Baja School. It wasn't Gracie Baja back then. The name was Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Club. It was funny. And uh, the main teachers when I first started were the Machado brothers. Higa Machado uh, and Carlos Machado were the main ones. But this was before they were all black belts. Uh, no, they were actually black belts already. Higan and Carlos were black belts. But uh, uh, John Machado was blue when I first started. John Jack Machado was purple. Hanzo was blue, if I'm not mistaken, or purple. I'm not sure now. Half was blue. Uh, and uh, Roger Machado, I don't recall, because he wasn't around too much when I was there back then. But, uh, the, and also, of course, Master Carlos Gracie Jr., Crawling Gracie and Helium Gracie, I think by then they were the owners of the school, but they really, uh, they really were not around teaching too much, you know, uh, anymore. So they were kind of more the owners of the school. So the, ones, the guys like really teaching were the Machado brothers. So. Was there a curriculum? Or did you start with the self-defense? Oh yeah, definitely. Like uh, back then, it was really into self-defense. Really, really into self-defense. You know what I mean? Like it was uh, 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 jujitsu was applied for real situations. So you always used to do in the beginning of the classes self-defense moves. You know that's the way it should be. Jujitsu is not just competition techniques. It's, of course, the core of jujitsu is like for you to protect yourself. And it was like a really, really big self-defense program. I remember it used to be fixed on the wall, some moves, it was really cool. And uh, of course we trained, you know, a lot of jiu-jitsu itself, but uh, most of the times, the beginning of the classes were self-defense moves. So there was a curriculum, yes sir, you know? Was there much of an emphasis on Valle Tudo in a those lot. days? Really? A lot, a lot. Way more than, way more than after when, you know, the competitions would begin to be like kind of the hype of the thing, so people begin to train more for competitions. But before, there was a lot of altitude training. And, and uh, we used to do that a lot. I remember on Fridays, uh, we used to train no gi a lot, just with the pants, no shirt. And we used to do like a lot of like, one person without the gloves and one person with the gloves. That's what we call blocking. And one person tried to come and punch you and, 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 and strike, and you have to try to take the person down, control the person, submit the person on the ground. So we did a bunch of that trainings. And it was funny, there's a lot of people that didn't believe in jiu-jitsu or people just kind of like from other martial arts backgrounds, they would just show up uh, 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 on that days, you know what I mean? So 
and, and always like the graces and mashallah always like to use like the smaller people to to kind of like prove you know that the fact is of jiu-jitsu because people there's a lot of people that came and like man i still don't get it man there's a bunch of people rolling on the ground like, you know what, what what's the the real you know value of that in a street fight and we had to show them you know and I, and they, thank they god I, feel it. thank god i did that a bunch of i did that a bunch of times so it was like lucky enough to to be successful and be like uh and, and show people about the effect because it was really small it was always really small so i mean so that's good so then you, how long were you at the grace baja school in rio man i was there like i said i began to train there at the school i think it was 85 84 was with Pitoku first and then i I, st I stayed there since then you know i got my black belt in 95 uh officially and after that, uh, you know, I trained pretty much every day at the Gracie Baja. You know, I saw all the changes. So when the Machado brothers left to the U.S. and my Carlinhos took over again, you know, uh, I saw all that things, you know, and I was there all the time. After I got my black belt, I moved to Belo Horizonte where I, I had a Gracie Baja Belo Horizonte. It was the first school, Gracie Baja school outside of Rio. It was the first official oh. school. Yeah, it was really cool. And uh, I was like a pioneer on that too, you know, first one to, to move to another city. But I was always coming back and forth because my family was in Rio. So, you know, since then, I will. Yeah. And when the competition scene took off, you dove headlong into that. I know you, yeah. you competed many times in world championships, done really well. You've also gone to Abu Dhabi, is that correct? Yeah, I went to Abu Dhabi once. Uh, 99, I was invited to go to Abu Dhabi. And uh, I did a bunch of competitions before on the, on the late 80s. Uh, middle and late 80s and in the 90s I did you know competition all the time it wasn't as many as now because now yeah. pretty much every weekend we have a competition but uh, you had like maybe four or five main competitions in a year we used to do that so you know it was, it was pretty cool you know so that's why you know I was a competitor because I, I saw the whole thing growing 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 and I took part of that it was pretty good you've also done MMA so if you had to choose only one for the rest of your life MMA Jiu Jitsu or Submission Grappling what would you choose Dangerous question. I love all of them. To be totally honest with you, I really love all of them. I mean, I uh, I did all of them. Maybe I didn't. I didn't do many because back then, when I was like younger, you know, there wasn't like weight classes, and you know, there wasn't like a lot of like light ways to go. Events were like pretty like hardcore. There wasn't money involved on that. It wasn't fame. So, I mean, when I was like younger, I didn't have a lot of chances to do that. You know, I, I just got chances when events got more professional stuff when I got a little older. But uh, I love MMA though, man. It gives me like, a, it gives me a, a, a kind of like a sensation. It gives me like a, a sense of awareness, a, 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 a sense of training hard and get ready that no other thing gives me. But if you ask me what you like more, I really don't know. I can't tell you. Because I did jiu-jitsu so many times. So maybe I did jiu-jitsu so many times, jiu-jitsu competition, that it's kind of like, you know, I and didn't have... In the office. Yeah, it, it was like something new. Like maybe it was something more, you know, new. But uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know that I got more nervous, I got more nervous to jiu-jitsu competition than to MMA. Really? Yes. Why do you think that was? I tried to think about an explanation and I tried to, to dig inside my... my <laughs> myself to look for that because I think jiu-jitsu is kind of like that you show up not now but you you, you used to show up and you don't know who you're going to face you don't know how many fights you're going to have you don't know anything you just have to go there and get ready for whatever you know what I mean uh, and then when I was competing on the worlds uh, it wasn't like internet that you know a practice before and all that you don't you know who was signing up it wasn't anything like that you pretty much know who you're going to fight the day off or two days before or something like that. And uh, it's kind of like, you know, I did like sometimes, one time, five matches of 10 minutes in one day in the black belt division. All the really tough guys. I didn't submit anybody on this one. You know, I lost in the finals for Hoyle, but it's kind of like really intense. It's really like, it can be really hard to for you if you have to be really ready. You have to have a professional preparation to do that. In MMA, and you don't got any penny for that, I forgot to say. You don't got any money, just spend money. But it gives you a recognition, a name, so it's worth it. But uh, MMA, they pay you a lot of money. You know, they fly you to a five-star hotel. You know, like in months and ahead, who you're going to fight. 
you got surrounded by your friends, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like more like a movie star thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, I don't get that nervous for that, to be honest with you. So. Now, I've heard some people say, they've also said that you're going to be modest about this, that you uh, did a lot of work with a spider guard, that you helped yes. really flesh it out and yes. develop it into the position that it is today. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the spider guard doesn't really translate very well to MMA or to submission grappling, yet do all three. So how do you, do you have a completely different style for each of those three games? Definitely. I mean, uh, jiu-jitsu is all about adaption. You know, in jiu-jitsu you have to adapt yourself to situations. And uh, the spider guard was, you know, funny because spider guard, a lot of people, I was maybe, I'm not going to lie, I was one of the first guys to use that in competition. And people were kind of like, man, in competition using competition I was one of the first guys to do that and people were kind of figuring out all the game other guys did or better Traven did and Henzo but the first guy that I saw at the school doing that and then I copied it I tried it was Henzo Gracie Henzo Gracie was the first guy that I saw at the school doing spider guard and we kind of had like similar uh, similar body types I was you know skinny and and, and kind of flexible and, and small and Henzo was too and then I saw that and I tried and I began to be really good on that. You know, actually some sweeps, kind of like that simple sweep that you push the foot on the, on the bicep, then you, you get the other leg, kind of like a scissor sweep. You know, uh, I was one of the first guys to do this successfully in competition. I never saw nobody doing in competition. Okay. So I hands doing it at the school. But, uh, but I did that, so the, 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 the spider guy now is like a must, everybody does that. And I remember they, I used to get a lot of prejudice for that. Really? Yeah. People didn't like it? No. Because they used to say it was an ugly jiu-jitsu, it's like a stalling jiu-jitsu, which was like very hard to pass if you have a really good defensive guard, I get it. But a lot of people that comes, like most of the people that came actually more from uh, from the side of, you know, Hoyler and, and, and Master Elio, they have always that classical jiu-jitsu with the hand on the collar and all yeah, that. Sao Ribeiro, I, I remember that I, I used to get some criticism like, man, it's an ugly jiu-jitsu, like, oh, what the hell is that, you know, come. And they still say that, you know, people from from that side of the family, you know? I mean, I think it's proved that the spider guard can be really offensive too. Yeah, you know, we have a sure. lot of setups and submissions and sweeps to do from there. But it is hard, yeah, to pass the guard when you do something like that. If it has somebody with bad intentions, it can be kind of like ugly to see. Okay, so but, you so you dismayed a certain generation of jiu-jitsu people by playing spider guard. But now, now that you're established in the scene, what do you think of uh, that Imbolo or the or the fifty fifty or the rubber guard or these other new types of of things of, of techniques techniques or? I think it's all valid man is evolution of the sport I really think I think you should not for, forbid any of those I mean actually about the bed Imbolo like from the Della Riva guard and spinning underneath I've been doing this for a long long time I think I, I don't have the footage here but you guys can see a footage of uh, one uh, match that I did in '99. It was a match where uh, Hansel Gracie, I uh, mean, Hoist Gracie fought Valigis Mayo. I did one of the preliminaries, and I did that burning ball thing with uh, Paulo Pinha. Oh, really? I almost swept him, but I mean, I did, you can see the motion right there. So it's been around for a long time. Actually, the 50 50, in 96, I saw Holeta and Salo Ribeiro doing 50 50 in 96. Not as elaborated as today, but it was there. You know, so it's kind of like. Well, there's only if, so many ways you can tangle two bodies together. Well, of course, that's what I'm saying. So, no, these guys didn't invent that. They just made it better. Right. You know what I mean? But uh, I think it's valid. It's evolution of the sport. However, I have one concern. People are gonna, probably not going to like what I say, but I have to say that. I didn't go to the wars this year. I couldn't go because of a family uh, issue. But I saw the matches online. Okay? And it was one of the years that I saw jiu-jitsu getting really ugly to watch. If I was imagining, I was putting myself in a situation of a person that doesn't know, doesn't understand about jiu-jitsu, and a lot of matches are really, really ugly to watch. First of all, there was you know, two people with their butts on the floor. Nobody wants to engage or go on top. The people just stay there for almost 10 minutes, just like trying to do bedding ball or try to go underneath and the other person. So it's kind of like people, it looks like two spiders, like, having sex, you know what I mean? It wasn't something pleasant to see. We understand and you know, you know, that people have great guards and nobody want to engage in the guard, it's a world championship. I understand that, I'm a competitor too. I totally get it. 
But if you think about the big picture, if you think about somebody who doesn't understand about Jiu Jitsu looking at that, they go, oh, God, this sucks, man. I mean, yeah. it's ugly. I, don't know. I think it's like boring mm -hmm. to see that. And the same thing with the 50 50. You know, the 50 50 is a position that is very hard for you to, 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 to get rid of that. So you're not going to forbid, you cannot forbid the evolution of the sport again. But you have to create some rules in order to make the fight get more fluid. Right. So one thing that I was thinking, for example, okay, for people in the 50-50, they sweep from the 50-50. I think you should only get awarded points if you sweep from the 50-50 and you disengage the 50-50. Right. If you're still engaged, I mean, you haven't finalized your position. No, that's, that, and you're not going to submit. Strap. You're not going to submit because they cannot do your hooks. You can't try to go for toe holds and go to the back. There's a bunch of things that people do, but in order to do that, they're going to disengage. If they just get engaged on that thing, all the time, what's the point? Nothing's going to happen. If you get somebody with a really bad intentions on 50-50, you're done, man. If you get somebody who's oh, I'm just going to put you here and I'm not going to do anything. A worse guy can beat a better guy for sure. Oh, I remember being at the Pan Ams one year, and it was a heavyweight, I think purple or brown belt match. Uh -huh. One big guy took another big guy down, and uh, in the first minute of the match, and the coach starts yelling, "Just hold! Just hold! Only five more minutes, or only six more minutes." <laughs> so it, it, you had that stalling before the fifty-fifty, but I think it's the fifty-fifty makes it a lot easier. I think the fifty-fifty is one of the better positions to stall. That I ever know. It's very, very good to stall if you need to. And you said about the coaches. I mean, how can I judge a guy like that? I can't. I'm not going to judge a guy like that, to be honest with you. I won't. Because it's a world championship. It's a title. I mean, I don't know what I would say if there was a title involved on that, you know, if I would do different. I would maybe say, hey, hold it. Get your results. I'm not going to lie to you, but if the rules are created in a sense sure. to make jiu-jitsu more appraisable, yes, I'm all for that. Have you or any of your students fought in those submission-only tournaments? I never did that, No, unfortunately. I would like to. MMA is kind of like that, if you ask That's me. Cool. MMA, you want to finish the guy fast because, you know, he can be knocked out at any time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I didn't. I would like to do that, you know. I mean, I'm not a competitor 100% of any time. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm 41 years old, uh, but I would like to do that. It would be awesome, and I think they're gonna put up a tournament like that now. Uh, Gracie Nationals, I think. My friend Jose Gracie is gonna do something like that. I heard in August or something. So I'm excited. Okay, let's well, let's talk about one other aspect of um, the sport, and that's the whole self-defense thing. I mean, I just watched you start a class. Mm -hmm. And as part of your warm-up, you had people doing basic striking combinations, and right now they're working a basic headlock defense. For sure. And so obviously you believe strongly that the self-defense is still an important component of it. Of course. I think it's like, let me ask you this. Why did the first place people look for jiu-jitsu? What's the, 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 the first place? Most to of not, people. To not get their butts kicked. Right? And what is that? Self-defense. Yeah. So people look for jiu-jitsu for self-defense. To get more confidence through the learning of the jiu-jitsu techniques to defend themselves in a situation if they need to. That's the core of jiu-jitsu. So in our fundamentals program, the Gracie Bar fundamentals program, it was always like that. Now it's just official because there's internet, everybody can see and all that. But it will always have that. I always taught my students since the day one that I taught class, I always taught the self-defense basic curriculum. Okay? When you go to the advanced program that people already know the, 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 the self-defense uh, uh, curriculum, they do more you know, uh, uh, technical and more like uh, uh, profound techniques on jiu-jitsu itself. Competition techniques and more advanced techniques. But twice a week, even those guys, I put them to do self-defense. I put any it, it was surprised because you see some people, headlock escape, they, uh, they forget. Yeah. Say, how are we going to forget something like that? Man, it has to be second. They have a fantastic butterfly guard sweep to X guard, but they can't get out of a headlock. Thank you. <laughs> you said it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, okay. so I tell them, okay, you know how to do a betting bolo and a, a, and a, and a reverse homo plata, but you don't know how to escape from a headlock. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Okay. The way you build jiu-jitsu is like that. You mm -hmm. learn how to defend yourself in the basic way, and then you progress. So what would you say 
um, that you'd have, how would you have to modify your jiu-jitsu to be self-defense effective? What are some of the things you need to keep in mind mm -hmm. if you are, if you do get tackled on the street or okay. you do get, you know, you slip and fall? For sure, yeah, definitely. Uh, I believe in one thing that a lot of people say, but I need to adapt a little bit there. A lot of people say, I don't do anything in jiu-jitsu that I cannot do on a real fight. A lot of people say that. I agree in a certain point because there's a lot of things that you have to adapt. But most of the things that you do every day here, you can do in a street fight. Most of the things. Of course, your awareness changes with strikes, with headbutts, with you know biting, with multiple opponents. There's a bunch of factors in there, but the core is there. If you get the, 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 the core of jiu-jitsu, the core of jiu-jitsu is a fight without striking. Right. But you can apply everything. Everything is applicable if you know if you are uh, uh, um, smart enough or you have enough knowledge to adapt that, but it can be adapted. Everything, everything you use can be adapted. And I, I, and I think the jiu-jitsu that I learned is like that and the way I train is like that. So, but man, when I see a world championship again, I see something like that, I see so much, getting so much away from reality that scares me a little bit. So I think the rules have to change in a little bit. We're not gonna block the evolution of the sport, but they had to change the rules in a certain point to make sure that we don't lose the essence of jiu-jitsu being effective on self-defense. If it gets completely away, I'm scared of what's gonna happen, for example, happen to Taekwondo and even to Judo. They're great sports, great techniques that we use and they're really effective, but the way they train for competition so much away from reality and I think it's hard to stop that, but- It's playing to the rules. It's, 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 it's very tricky. We gotta be really careful about that. Mm -hmm. On the self-defense theme, have you ever seen the YouTube videos, the get in my guard videos? This guy walking down the street, he bumps somebody, picks a fight, and they're about to start fighting, and he jumps to his, falls down on the ground, he's like, get in my guard, get in my guard, come on, get in my guard. No, you've never seen I that? didn't see that, but it's probably really funny. You know, it's kind of like a, like a comic thing to, 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 to jiu-jitsu fighters that uh, they, they think that they can apply any technique in any situation. I mean, you're not gonna do this in a street fight. Come on, you know. If you put, your, if you end up with your back on the mat, you have to know how to defend yourself. But if not, I mean. So I think it's kind of like it's kind of more like a like a comedy thing against some jujitsu guys that have the wrong idea, you know. So I mean, that's what I really think it is. And it's funny actually because you're not gonna, you know, just tell somebody to go on your guard. You know, you have to try to do other things first. If you end up there, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's why you learn. The, the, the self-defense system, you know, the self-defense system is not about guard. The self-defense system is about a little striking, takedowns, top game, and, and so forth, so on, you know. So uh, it's kind of a misconception, if you ask me, about uh, some people, some jiu-jitsu people do. So it's kind of like a radical, a radical thing, but uh, I don't agree with that, you know, you have to do yeah. other things. Like oh, it, it's definitely a comedy video, like, the, obviously yeah. these guys who did it were... I get it, people. though, I get it, though, I get it, though. So then the flip side of the whole pulling guard in the street fight, or in MMA, although some people have pulled guard successfully in MMA, yeah. is the whole game of takedowns. How do you see the takedowns relating to jiu-jitsu, and how do you train them here at the school without having tons of injuries? Because that, in my experience, anyhow, is that the bane of training takedowns is that the rate of injury is so That's, much higher. I totally agree with you. Uh, the takedowns are so much, so important for jiu-jitsu. I mean, if I have like really big mats, and if there wasn't a problem with the injury that you're gonna be talking about in a second, I would do every training begin standing up. Every training, because standing up and takedowns are very, very important. If you see MMA, for example, People with great jiu-jitsu are not being successful because they don't have takedowns. They don't know how to take the person down. So it's very easy for the striker to disengage. So that's a problem. Uh, but I think it's essential part of jiu-jitsu, you know, and jiu-jitsu has really good techniques for takedowns. We do. It's just people just don't practice. That's a problem. Uh, but uh, talking about the problem of injuries, I totally agree with you, you know, like takedowns and stand-up training, you can get hurt quite more, quite easily than training on the ground. So a lot of people uh, uh, use that fact to completely nullify the stand-up training. And I don't think it's smart, because I think it has a ways that you can train 
stand-up trainings and takedown training without needed the need to be 100% all the time. For example, you do a lot of grip fighting. Grip fighting is a really good drill and helps whenever you're gonna go to the real deal, you know? Like, you know, grip fighting, you know, just position you on the grips, you're not gonna be doing takedowns, you're just gonna be training your posture, your base and your angles and all that. It's a good way to train. Sometimes you train like with one person attacking, one person defending. So they, they don't go at it. So one person's kind of all just defending the takedowns and the other person tries to go. Sometimes you do just, just hip throws and hip tosses. You cannot attack the legs. And then people go like that. And sometimes just grabbing on the legs. And then eventually, of course, you have to do the real deal. But uh, there's ways that people can train and they're gonna get their body ready and they're gonna get awareness to get ready for whatever they need to do and they do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to be like every day like, like a tournament, you know? Especially if you're not used to do that if you're students. They don't know what they're doing. They're gonna get hurt for sure. But if you uh, educate your students to do that kind of training, they're gonna go more ready and then the injuries are not gonna be that much. But let me tell you, man, injuries are part of the sport. Injuries are part of every sport. So, I mean, you try your and, best and, and to you go to do fight. any sport, you stay on the couch and you die of a heart attack, so. So, you know, I'll, 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 rather, I'll rather do sports, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks so much. If people do wanna train with you or find out more about you, what, what are, what's the best way to do that? You're here in, in Webster, which is just I'm south here, of Houston? Yes, sir. I'm here in Webster, the Clear Lake area, south of Houston. I'm next door to NASA, where, you know, they do the rocket things and, the, and all the space things. I'm here next door. It's actually on the same street. And uh, our website is www.gracybahatx.com. Uh, I also have a school in Brazil, Gracie Baja BH, Gracie Baja Belo Horizonte. And it's a huge school with a lot of tons of black belts. It's a great school to go to. And, uh, you know, you guys are more than welcome to come at any time. You know, you're going to have a, a, a good host here, there, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And just one more thing before I forget. Our training website, too, very good training website. If you, have, if you want to have a supplementary tool for your jiu-jitsu, www.draculinobjjtraining.com or www.draculino.com. Perfect.